Brothers and sisters, it is a well-known fact that Melbourne is the sporting capital of Australia. Many people love to be physically active in our beautiful parks. There are a lot of gyms available not only in our city but around the country as well. Even the smallest towns have a place dedicated to the sport. Did you know that there are more than 5,000 health and fitness centers across the country? Before COVID-19, the fitness industry had gone from strength to strength. Many gyms were open 24-7. Now they are slowly coming back to business. My friends, we need to look after our bodies. That is an obvious fact. No community in the world is clearer than the Catholic Church about the necessity of respecting and nourishing the body from the beginning of life to the end. However, we can see that a cult of the body almost becomes an addiction. For many, physical health seems more important than their spiritual life. For example, some Christians choose to spend a lot of time in a gym on Sunday morning rather than going to a church for an hour. What is the primary goal in life? Surely it is to give the highest honor and praise to God, not to ourselves or others. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul is clear about it. You should use your body for the glory of God. At the same time, he reminds us that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. He wrote, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you since you received him from God. This is one of the reasons why we need to reject any form of sin of the flesh and idolization of the body. The Apostle of the Nations warns us by saying, Keep away from fornication. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why our Catholic liturgies and sacraments show how respectful the Church is towards the human body. Last week I was talking about the baptism of infants. During the ceremony, a child's body is anointed with the oil of catechumens and the oil of chrism. We use the blessed oil during the sacrament of priesthood. When we are sick or about to die, our bodies are anointed again. Our bodies are blessed with holy water during different liturgies many times in our life. During non-pandemic times, we also bless ourselves with water as we enter a church. On Christmas Day, we celebrated the fact that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ himself sanctified our bodies through his life, death and resurrection. Let us remember that our bodies will be similar to his glorified body in the life to come. So, brothers and sisters, let us respect our bodies by nourishing them both spiritually and physically. Let us make a decision to live holy lives every day. That will allow us to hear God's voice as Samuel did in today's first reading. And we'll be able to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. We will be able to positively respond to God's word. In today's gospel, we heard how first disciples started to follow Jesus. We had already decided to be the Lord's disciples, however, we will be truly faithful to him only when our hearts are pure and we are ready to say with the psalmist, Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Let us teach our young about their dignity as human beings who were consecrated to the Lord at the moment of their baptism. Let us remind them and ourselves too that a true happiness in life and beyond comes from the presence of God in our lives. Brothers and sisters, I would like to finish this homily with a request. Please pray the rosary daily and receive the sacraments as often as you can 
to be spiritually strong. May Our Lady cover us all with the mantle of her purity, helping us to be faithful servants of the Lord.